Hey guys, so today we're gonna to be doing a full face of Clay de Poe. I recently hauled their holiday 2019 collection. I think it's called the Kimono Dream Collection. And Clay de Poe was kind enough in sending me the pieces that we're gonna be exploring today. Uh, this is not a sponsored video at all. They just sent the pieces to me to review and showcase for you guys. So I'm gonna be putting on a full face and kind of integrating the pieces from the collection in this video. But I just wanna quickly mention what I do have because they didn't send me everything. I'm actually on the Clay de Post site right now and there's one thing that they didn't send me, which is totally fine. I just wanted to mention it in case maybe you clicked on this video because that's the one thing that you wanted to see and I don't have it, but it is their Radiant Liquid Rouge Matte. So that seems to be an online exclusive to their online site. And of course I'll have everything linked down below if you're interested in taking a look as to what that is. But I do have their um, Radiant Multi Repair Oil. I also have their Refining Press Powder. Um, I also have the Eyeshadow Quad. And then I have the two lipsticks. So I have the Lipstick Cashmere in Red Passion, and then I have their lipstick in 511 Silk Passion. So all of these products are limited edition. I do know that this oil is part of the regular line, but what is limited edition is the packaging. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. What I did wanna mention also before we jump in, because I'm on their site and I just discovered this, is if you order three or more products from this limited edition holiday collection, they will send it to you in this gift box. So I thought that was really nice. They sent me the products in this gift box and it's really lovely. It's very, very festive. and it's it's very nice quality. The gold is carried through all the way on the inside. So I thought I would just show that to you guys in case you were interested. So again, that seems to be an online exclusive to their site. So let's go ahead and jump in. I wanted to apply the oil uh, with you guys. So I basically have done all of my skincare up until the oil step, but I wanted to start off with this guy. So this is again, their Radiant Multi Repair Oil, and it comes in this beautiful, beautiful glass bottle with this um, kimono fabric inspired design on the bottle. And the first thing that struck me about this oil, aside from the beauty of the actual bottle, is how big it is. Usually when I buy oil, they're so, I mean, teeny, teeny, tiny, but this is two and a half fluid ounces. It is, let me just check before I misspeak. It's $168. And I've been enjoying this for, um, I wanna say a little bit over a week now. And I like using this during the daytime. So you guys can probably see, but this oil is on the thinner side. So I use about five to six drops and that covers my entire face, no problem. So I'm just gonna go ahead and unscrew. It has like very typical dropper here. That's five drops right there. And I would hold up my hand, but it's already kind of like running off. So it is definitely an oil on the thinner side, which again, I really enjoy for the daytime because it's very light. It absorbs very, very quickly, but it does leave my skin looking and feeling very, very moisturized and nourished. I will mention that there is a fragrance in here. So if fragrance bothers you, or if it's something you just want to flat out stay away from in, in skincare, I did want to mention that. It's not um, overpowering, you know, it's not that strong, uh, but it is definitely present. And it's different from the typical Clay de Peau fragrance, which is their signature like rose scent. This is different. This does not smell like that. It smells a little bit um, definitely floral, but a little bit uh, lighter. Maybe there's a little bit of like a fruitiness in there too. So that is the oil applied. I don't know if that was helpful at all <laughs> doing that on camera for you guys, um, but I was gonna put it on anyway, so I thought I'd record it. So I'm just gonna hop off and like kind of finish up my skincare. I'm gonna put on some moisturizer and then we'll come back and kind of start the full face of Clay de Peau. So I'll be right back. All right, I just put on a little bit of light moisturizer because I'm going to be using the foundation from Clay de Peau and this is a very moisturizing foundation. In fact, I always call it, it's more of like a tinted cream because it really is is so emollient. So anyway, I put on a very light uh, moisturizer and while that's kind of settling in, uh, what I forgot to show you was the box that the oil comes in. So all of the packaging in this limited edition is inspired by kimono fabric. And then they also showcase an artist that they worked with to create this packaging as well. So this sleeve comes off and this box, along with all the other boxes in this collection, um, it's kind of like an origami style box where everything kind of opens up and then 
there's like a box inside that the product sits in. Let me, let me take that out. This is gonna get crazy. Um, but there is, in every single box, there is this painting. And the artist um, who painted all of these, um, a Japanese woman, she's featured on the Clay de Poe YouTube channel. So I will leave a link to it down below. It's not a very long uh, video at all, but it shows her kind of working and she talks about her inspiration and her process a little bit. So it's very, very interesting. And these paintings are just so, so beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? So it feels like every aspect of the packaging was really thought out and thought out well. And I just, I can't get over how beautiful this packaging is because it's not only um, kimono fabric that's printed on here, but it's such high quality printing. It really looks like it's the fabric. Um, and then it's kind of uh, embossed a little bit. So you, there's like a texture on the box. It's just, it's very, very cool. And you guys know how much I'm into packaging. So I'm gonna apply the Clay de Poe The Foundation in the color O20. Uh, I love this foundation, but it is very, very emollient. I've used up quite a bit of it actually. And uh, I like using this when the weather gets a little bit cooler. In the summertime, it's a little bit much. I feel like it just kind of sweats off of my face. So I really like this in the cooler months and it is definitely getting cooler here in Vegas, which I'm so, so happy about. So I'm just gonna scoop some out. So I scooped out about that much and I'm just going to start by dotting it on my face. And this definitely has that Clay de Poe rose fragrance. And I've got my Coyuto Fupa brush here and I'm going to just blend that in. Look at this crazy blemish. I got that when I was in Houston and <laughs> it's just, it's so red and angry. It's not even, it's not even like raised. There's like nothing there. It's just my skin, it's just angry. All right, so the foundation is applied. I'm gonna go ahead and apply some concealer. I have uh, my two Clay de Poe concealers out. This is like the concealer, their stick concealer that they're very well known for. And then I also have their radiant corrector for eyes. And I was just gonna decide <laughs> on the spot here how much help I needed. I think, I think I need a lot of help. So I'm gonna go with the stick concealer today. This has more coverage than the radiant corrector for eyes. So I'm going to swipe this underneath my eyes. I'm also gonna put some on this um, angry spot there. And then I'm gonna take the same foundation brush and just blend that out. All right, oh, I didn't tell you the shade. Uh, I'm using ivory in this concealer. I think it's their lightest shade. All right, next let's move to the Refining Pressed Powder. And this is in the shade 101 Blooming Cherry. Now I purchased this myself from, I believe Nordstrom, and it's $105. And it is, well, this is limited edition like the rest of the pieces. And I purchased last year's special edition Refining Pressed Powder. That was part of their holiday collection. Again, limited edition. And it kind of had this like Alice in Wonder land theme and that is this guy here so this was in pink push me and I just wanted to compare the two hopefully you'll be able to see the difference but um, the pink push me but the pink push me which is this guy is a little bit cooler a little bit more pink than this year's blooming cherry which is a little bit peachy and then the other thing I wanna mention is I was looking at the ingredients for this pressed powder and there is mineral oil in there. I generally don't get along with mineral oil, especially when it's in eyeshadows because I feel like the colors just kind of like, I don't know, almost like melt away and they blend, they almost, I don't know, they, they just act very, very funky on my eyelids. So try and stay away from eyeshadows with mineral oil in them. But I didn't save the box uh, from last year, so I don't know if this one has mineral oil in there. I would assume so because I think also their regular press powder has mineral oil and I love this powder. It's, you know, I was surprised actually when I learned there's mineral oil in there. I was like, really? But it just works really, really well on my skin. But I wanted to mention it. I know a lot of people don't like mineral oil, so it is in their press powder. All right, so let's go ahead and apply this Blooming Cherry. I'm gonna take the opportunity and use one of my Chikahoto Silver Fox brushes. This is their F01. This is the biggest powder brush that came in the set. Um, and if you guys don't know, I was recently in Japan and I went to their brush festival um, in Kumano outside of Hiroshima and Chikahoto just released their Silver Fox brush set. So I purchased it and it's, it's so, so soft. It's softer than squirrel hair. It's 
absolutely amazing. And I haven't uh, gotten a chance to use these brushes very much. So I think this is just the second time I'm using these brushes. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and dip in. And I'm going to just apply by patting first. Sweep away any excess. So there is the powder applied. I really think it does such a nice job smoothing. I just, I absolutely love it. And I'm generally a fan of loose powder, um, but this is great. This pressed powder is wonderful. And who can argue the practicality of pressed powder is just so much easier to just work with and travel with and throw into your purse than loose powder. So I've really been liking this refining pressed powder. I just really love the like filtered effect it gives my face. All right, and for blush, I'm gonna use my cream blush from Clé de Peau. I have it in uh, number four, and this is probably one of my favorite like Clé de Peau products. It's just a great color, and I love the formula of it, the texture of it. It's like creamy enough, but it's not too emollient, and once you kind of like tap it onto the skin, it really, it definitely like kind of dries down to a powder, but it doesn't have like a powder finish. There's like a little bit of a sheen to it. You can probably see it on my finger. It has a little bit of a sheen to it. So it really has like a nice longevity on the cheek. With cream cheek products, you know, sometimes they fade very quickly. Um, I have very dry skin, so I don't generally have that problem, but I know a lot of people have mentioned that. But with this blush, I feel like it doesn't fade at all. It really stays put all day. So. I love this one. All right, and next I have their Bronzing Powder Duo. I have it in the shade one. I think they only have two shades, one and two. Uh, this is the lighter one. And it has like a lighter and a darker. I just use both. I don't think that there's that much difference on the skin. My only complaint about this bronzer is that the packaging is very, very thick. And it's because underneath they have like a built-in brush, but I find the brush to be unnecessary because I don't use it. Um, and it's just, yeah, it's just really bulky. Anyway, um, there is a mirror on the inside. I'm gonna use another uh, Chikahoto Silver Fox brush. This is the FO-3 brush. And I'm gonna swirl it in both colors kind of back and forth. And the tone to this bronzer is so interesting. It has almost like a peachy warmth to it, but it's it's not um, it's not terribly orangey. I really like it. This is definitely one of those great bronzers, like if you just want a bronzer and you don't want to add a blush on top, this could definitely, I feel like, serve as both. So I'm just trying to blend it into my blush. And then as for highlighter, I have one of their Luminizing Face Enhancers. Uh, I have a couple of the shades, but this one is my favorite, and I believe this is their newest one. This is shade number 18, and let's see if you guys can see that without blinding you. But that is number 18, and it has like a little bit of warmth in there. It ends up like looking very kind of like champagne on the skin. I just find it to be very, very pretty. And the Clé de Peau highlighters are definitely on the more subtle side, but I find this one compared to the other Luminizing Face Enhancers to be the most reflective. Um, but in the large scheme of like highlighters, this is definitely very, very subtle. I'm gonna use my Surratt cheek brush and dip in here. This product is definitely on the powdery side, so you pick up a lot of product pretty quickly. And there's, you know, a little bit of kick up in there. but it gives such a nice glow. I really, really enjoy it. All right, and next for eyebrows, I have the Clé de Peau uh, Eyebrow Pencil. This has a really actually interesting shape. It's like an oval shape. So it's definitely, it's not a point. It's definitely, you know, longer and skinny, but it's oval. And then the other side is a spoolie. So I'm going to brush out my brows. And this pencil is very nice. It's not too hard and waxy so i do feel like i have to be a little bit careful with it but it's not it's not like quite as soft as the sisley eyebrow pencil which i feel like i have to be very careful with so this one is just it's just a little bit softer than like the hourglass or the abh oh and this pencil i forgot it's actually refillable so um, i was looking for the color and i remembered that this is actually a cartridge uh, so i'm using color number 204 by the way all right, and now for the eyeshadow quad. I'm so excited to give this a shot. So this is the packaging. Again, another like beautiful kimono fabric there. And then this one, same 
idea opens up like origami style and then the quad is sitting there. Let me just pull the quad out so I can show you the painting that's on the inside. I think this one could be my favorite. Isn't that just incredible? Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, so that is the outer packaging and then the actual compact has this kimono fabric on there. So the shade of this is number 320 draped in velvet and this is $80. So they're calling it an eye color quad, uh, but there's three eyeshadows here and then one cream liner. So I swatched these for you in my haul, but let me just do it again. So those are the three shadows. And, oh, I still have some foundation, so let me <laughs> just swatch them right over here. So I don't know if you can tell in these swatches, but the first and third shades have a little bit of a like satin shimmer to them. And then this one, I think, is a matte. Yeah, this color is a matte. And I don't know if you can see it, but it looks like there's um, like a cherry blossom embossing on the pans. It's so... It's just so pretty. And then I had to look up what this was. I didn't know if this was some sort of like eyeshadow base or something. It's not, it's a cream eyeliner. So that's how I'm gonna use it. Um, so I'm gonna go into this peach shade and blend that all over. I'm gonna use my Silver Fox uh, Chikahoto brush F05. And I'm gonna sweep this all across my lid. These powders are so soft and silky. And uh, like many of their things, this is actually like refillable. So you can pop this whole portion out and put in any of the other clay to poe quads that you may have um, because you'll probably wanna use this beautiful case. So I thought that was pretty awesome because I do have some other clay to poe quads that I'll probably wanna throw in here um, and switch it out if I wanna use those instead. All right, so there's the peach shimmer all over. You're probably not gonna see it. It's very, very close to my skin tone, but there's like a little, like a slight, slight peachy tint to my lids, but almost, almost imperceptible. So let's move over to the pink shade. I wanna use that to kind of add a little bit of dimension. I don't know if it's gonna be deep enough, but we'll see. I've got my Sonia G Blender Pro brush and product picks up very, very easily. Again, this is a pretty soft powder. And I'm just going to apply that to the outer corner here. These are not shades that I would normally use, and I feel like maybe this is a pink that I've been afraid to use because I feel like it makes me look, I don't know, like I have puffy eyes or that I, I, I look ill or something, but I don't actually feel that way about this color. You guys let me know down below in the comments section. I think I talked about this when I was using the Pat McGrath Ritualistic Rose Quad. I was worried that I was just gonna end up looking like I had pink puffy eyes, um, but that one had a really like kind of plummy, uh, wine kind of like base to it. This is definitely much brighter. So I do wonder like, how is that coming across to you guys? Does it look like maybe a little bit too pinky peach? In real life, I feel like it actually looks pretty cool and it does look very like Asian inspired, I feel like. These colors are so, so soft. Like this quad, I feel like is the perfect example of like Asian makeup versus like Western makeup where it's so much brighter and more heavily pigmented here, where in Asia, it's so, so much softer and more like watercolory. And this is just the perfect example of it. And the pink is blending really, really nicely into this peach color over here where I feel like I'm getting this nice kind of like gradation there, almost like a sunset gradation there. It's really pretty. Then I'm going to take this pencil one brush from Sonia Jean, go into this uh, frosty white shade and just add this a little bit to like the inner portion of my lid here and the inner corner. I think that shade may be too subtle for that. So I think what I'm going to do is like take this Sonia G Builder Pro brush, go into this shade and really kind of bring it onto the lid here. Maybe use it under my brow. That's nice, again, very, very subtle, and I'm not even sure if you guys are gonna be able to see like the white satiny effect on the inner portion of my lid there. Okay, and now for the eyeliner. I'm a little bit nervous. How am I gonna apply this? I have a skinny little eyeliner brush. This is from Isam. This is their W01. 
Um, or I could try and find like a flat angled brush, like this guy, I have this from Sigma. This is the angled brow brush. It's the E75 brush, but I could totally use this, I think for liner. So I think I feel a little bit more comfortable with a brush this shape. So I'm gonna clean this off because there's actually some stuff on here. <laughs> of course, of course there is. All right, I've cleaned off the brush. Uh, I'm gonna go right into this cream shadow here. And it doesn't seem too emollient, which I'm happy about. I feel like if it's too soft, it's just kind of messy. This actually looks almost like it's powdery now that I'm kind of getting my brush in there. So let's give this a shot. Definitely nice and black, and it's going over the powder shadow very easily. And I'm just kind of like getting it into the lash line here. Easy, very easy, very, very effective. I guess let's put some on my lower lash line and see how that turns out. That was easy too. I wonder how quickly this sets, if it sets at all. I'm gonna do the other eye and then we'll come back and see if this actually sets. I'm gonna see if I can smudge it out. Okay, so the eyeliner is applied. That was really easy. I really like the formula of it, but let's see if it actually sets down and if it becomes smudge proof. I think that'll be really interesting. I guess I'll just use my finger. I'm gonna use my ring finger here. Some of it came off, but it's actually, I don't know if you can see that, right at the tip of my ring finger there. So some of it came off, but not much. So I would say it sets down like mostly. I wanna say, I don't know, maybe like 95% it sets down because that is very, very faint and I was really rubbing in there. I'm gonna go ahead and use some mascara. I don't have clay de peau mascara, I did, but it got old so I tossed it. So I'm just gonna do that off camera and then we'll come back and play with the lipsticks. All right, and now for the lipsticks. So they sent me the Lipstick Cashmere in 512 Red Passion and this comes in the beautiful limited edition red packaging. I believe these colors are also limited edition. Um, and then they sent me their lipstick in 511 Silk Passion. So let's go ahead and try the lipstick cashmere on. So this is $65, as is this lipstick. So they're both $65 each. So let's go ahead and take a look at this. Ooh, isn't this pretty, this red passion. So this has that kind of like petal design at the top of the lipstick bullet, which is so pretty. Here is the red passion color. So it's a really great bright primary red. It has a little bit of blue going on in there. So it's a little bit more cool toned, definitely a little bit more cool toned than what I'm used to. I generally like kind of like orangey reds. So let's see what this looks like. super pigmented. I feel like I barely pressed <laughs> onto my lips and it it was like done. I didn't need to kind of go back and forth. I didn't need to press hard. Wow, that's incredible. And I have one of their lipstick cashmeres and I'm just, I'm not the biggest fan of the color. And the formula I remember was not my favorite. So it goes on very, very smooth. And I think it has, as you can tell, incredible pigmentation, but you know what they kind of remind me of? The Tom Ford Satin Matte Lipsticks. So they go on really smoothly, they have great pigmentation, they feel really comfortable, and then they just start to slowly kind of like set and they eventually, I wanna say maybe about an hour or two, they eventually start to make my lips feel a little bit dry. These are meant to have like a matte finish. And in terms of like a matte lipstick, if I were to consider that, these are very, very comfortable. But if you have extremely dry, sensitive lips like I do, you may feel that like drying down part. So that is the 512 Red Passion. Let me take this off and then we'll put on the other lipstick. All right, now let's go in with 511 Silk Passion. This one is pink. It's almost like a perfect match. I feel like to the shade in the eyeshadow coil. Let's just take a quick look. Yeah, almost. Almost like a perfect match to that shade. So I'm excited to put this on. I don't really wear colors like this very often, so I'm excited to see what this looks like. 
So these are called uh, lipstick cashmere, and then these are just lipstick. These are um, more of a cream formula, which I personally enjoy much more. They're much more comfortable on the lips. You can see they don't have a matte finish. They have kind of like a radiant finish, and they're just lovely. So there is Silk Passion on my lips. I really never like wear pinks like this. And it's so springy. It's really, really springy. This probably isn't something that I'm gonna pull out often now with the fall. You know what, maybe winter, maybe winter, but I feel like fall, I just want those like warm, deep colors, but this is very different for me. You guys let me know what you think of this color on me. But that is it for this video. So that is my full face of Clay de Poe using their uh, Kimono Dream Holiday 2019 collection. And in summary, I, I really enjoy everything. I think what is the most surprising to me is the eyeshadow quad. When I first saw this uh, released, when I purchased the powder, I passed on this because I thought, I don't know if those colors if there's enough going on. I felt like this color story was gonna be a little bit too flat. I wouldn't be able to create like an entire look, but I have to say, I appreciate this soft look. Now, is this my ideal fall holiday look? Probably not, but I think come spring, this is perfect. This is such a lovely look. So thank you so much for tuning in, spending some time with me, hanging out. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know any thoughts down below in the comment section. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you in my next video.